Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Tuesday, May 26th, so we're heading into the last week of May, the final stretch. Um, it's been really fun. I've had a lot of fun with my monogamania that I did for the first 20 days, and starting in this, since, since the 21st, working on a new start and some full coverage pieces so that I could contribute to the full coverage fanatics, you know, monthly challenges. So I realized like a, a couple weeks into May that I hadn't even checked Enchanted Stitching Challenges because I think when I checked right before May started, they hadn't posted anything yet. And then, then it was May and I was really absorbed in finishing Anne of Green Gables and realized it'd been like a week and a half and I hadn't even thought to go back in there. So I realized I'm just going to stick with my silly, you know, random mania plans for the whole month and I'll hop back on that challenge ship on uh, in June. So that's the plan at this point. I'll just keep doing my thing in May and not worry about trying to fit any prompts in. It's been kind of nice just to take a break and then I'll go back to it in June. So I feel like it's been really long time since I've seen all of you and it's only been one day longer <laughs> than my regular update. But I've worked on a lot of things so I have a lot to show you. So let's get started. Um, I guess we can do the random projects first. So here we go. I am caught up on my Feels Like Home mystery cell that's with the Fat Quarter Shop. Um, there's one more part left. The fourth part came out this past Friday and fifth part will come out this Friday. So I'm... Um, So I have parts one through four finished, and this is how that looks. The needle minder made some dents. I got this as a gift from somebody else at the um, Southern California cross stitch retreat that I went to a couple years ago. Um, so I don't know. I think they maybe made it or just bought it. I'm not sure, but um, so I don't know where it came from. <laughs> but this is my. Parts one, two, three, and four, and then part five will be right here. So I'll get started on that today. I, I'm i using the Classic Colorworks thread pack, so there is a lot of variegation. And this is the color Tabby, which looks very light when you put it just as the skein next to the white fabric. It doesn't look like it'll show up, but it really shows up nicely and I don't know if it's maybe that I'm doing this one over one that maybe helps the color pop out maybe I don't know we I had some discussions on Instagram with people who were doing the DMC conversion and the D, the DMC conversion for this color is 762 which they were struggling with the fence showing up in 762 um because it's just a little bit too light it's like the lightest color in here but this has enough of the darker shades in it that it it works. So we, um, a couple of us were kind of tech commenting back and forth, suggesting that this color, which is Plymouth Rock in the classic color works for conversion, it's the next darkest gray. The conversion for that is 415. So we were talking about blending 762 and 415 together to make the fence, because then you will get some of the light and dark shades all together, and it won't be too dark, and it won't be too light. So that's something that we, um, a few of us were talking about on Instagram. So if that helps you, you could try that if you're doing the DMC. And I did mine, um, I stitched it vertically. If you're using a fancy floss, I was stitching my planks vertically and then these ones were sideways. Then do another vertical plank and, and another couple sideways and vertical to help it look more like planks of wood. So I like how that turned out. One more to go. I gotta get a move on because there's only a few days left. I like to post these when they release on Friday. So then I'll be done with that one. And I'll probably make this into like a project bag or something. I have my last two temperature pieces, the quilt and the balloons. I'm thinking of doing the same thing with them. So at some point I'm gonna have to, you know, get my sewing thinking cap on and get that sorted out. But I have not, uh, 
the time or the interest at this point to work on it. So I may just start a portfolio of finished things because I'm not used used to finishing that many small things. Anyways, I have been working a lot on school day sampler because I want to gift these. I had hoped to maybe gift gift all the teacher gifts at the end of the year. Um, but I don't, so far I have not heard of any in-person meetups of any kind with the elementary school. There's, everybody's finishing early, like um, the junior high high school district where we are finished last week. They would have normally had two more weeks, but it's like extra credit, get caught up kind of stuff right now. And I just turned in his textbooks today. Um, the elementary is getting off a week early, so they have time to turn in the loaner computers and, and everything else. And so it's, everything is wrapping up a little bit early, but I haven't heard anything like, hey, come see your teacher and say goodbye. Like there hasn't been anything like that. Everything is still long distance and digital and whatnot. So what I may do because shipping frames is um, problematic. I got, I bought a bunch of frames from Hobby Lobby and they came like really, really wrapped up tight in bubble wrap. So everything was um, safe when I, when it got to me, but then I'm worried about mailing them out to the teachers. And so I'm thinking I may just hold on to them until back to, back to school night for the following school year and hand them out in person then. Cause anyways, but I had been trying to finish this up this week because I had all my frames and I wanted to, you know, FFO everything all at the same time that I have a, another FFO to show you. That's not a teacher gift. Um, and I thought it'd be fun to do them all together, show them all in the same video, but then I just, I wanted to work on my other stuff a little bit more. So I did put a little bit more time on this as soon as it feels like home style was done. Um, but I didn't get it done. It's close, but it's not done. And I will be, um, probably when I, when I, fully finish all the teacher things, I'll show them all at once. So this is where this is now compared to last time. And it is pretty much complete except for these flowers down here. Everything else is finished. And I think it's pretty cute. I There's a lot of things that are changed. This is on 18 count beige Ada and my daughter picked the colors, and when we picked the colors, we were just picking stuff out of my Fancy Floss stash, except for the white and black, which is just white and black. It was B5200 and 310. Um, we were going based off the picture. So we're like, oh, there's a brown, there's a green, there's a black, there's a yellow, there's a this. When I got down to stitching it, there's a lot of colors that were not that distinguishable on the cover. So... They were like this color and this color and this color and this color and this color were like all different. <laughs> and I just did them all the same. Had one fancy floss for all of them. This was meant to be like a tan also, but since there was more tan elsewhere, I just made that gray. Um, I added some French knots for the stars because I thought that would be fun. Um, I made the beak and feet of this guy the brownie color that it, which probably could be darker if I had pick, been picking the colors myself but that's all right um I made that the brown color because otherwise it would have matched this border and on the cover it does look very similar um <clears throat> but I didn't want it to match so I went ahead and did that in the dark color and still think he's cute um I did pick a different white for this and this, which was Raw Linen by Color and Cotton. Um, just because I figured the apple maybe should be slightly dirtier than the bright white of the books because it's fruit. The only other thing is down here, these, these flowers should be red and yellow, and I'm gonna instead do them in pink and purple. So there's no purple anywhere else, but it's my daughter's favorite color and we had to do it. <laughs> so, all I have left is the, the green and pink and purple down here. So I should be able to get that done pretty soon. I'm gonna finish up my, <clears throat> I gave myself a pass over the weekend to not work on my customer stitching. <clears throat> so I worked on this and I worked on my 
Princess de Broglie, and then called it good. So, but I need to get back to that and finish finish up that customer stitching, and I'll have another customer stitching that will start soon after um, that I'll need to spend some time on every day as well to make sure that gets done in time. And anything else? I did not get to my temperature tree because I wanted to try to get that teacher gift finished, but I didn't. So I'm trying to think if I have any, I don't think so. I don't think I have any um, Bloomtopia to show you yet. The next one releases on the first, so I'll show that next time. All right, so let's go show what I worked on. So I was in the middle of Quick Stitch Iris last time. I think I did all the rest of this that I needed to. Put this stuff over here. It's hot in here. Oh yeah, I should show you this first. I had the fan on, but um, it was creating like a, a strobe shadow on the wall and I figured that would be bad for you guys. Um, but it's hot this week, so my temperature tree is probably gonna get up um, into the yellows and oranges again, so. But I do have an FFO that I did do this morning. So here is my letter H fairy, and I framed it in a eight by 10 frame I found at Hobby Lobby that I had shipped to my house because our stores in California are not open for business yet. Only pick up and curbside or online orders. So um, you can see some reflections, but I thought I left the glass on Maybe that's a little better. So I'm at least reflecting the ceiling. I left the glass on, even though there are beads, because this is going to a non-stitching young person who who knows where she'll put it, you know? Um, in her room, in her dorm room. It may not be a place that will be always clean. I just thought it should be protected. Um, and it had room. There was a cardboard insert in between in between the back um, and I put one of Lindy Stitches things on here but there was a cardboard thing in between this and the glass um, that allowed for a lot of space so I cut a piece of mat board 8 by 10 and I laced it and popped it in there and nothing looks squished and I think it's turned out really nice so this is a, a chunkier frame than I expected it's very fat but I liked that the dark wood picks up on the H and then the gold um, edges picks up on all the gold beads that are in here. So I hope she likes it and this will be gifted on Saturday at a graduation party because this is um, for my oldest niece, her graduation from high school. So woohoo, got that done. Um, and I will be going back to all my family pieces coming up here in June. So we'll get those all brought back out. So anyways, back to what I stitched on this week. I did quick stitch iris for a few more days. This is Heaven, Ear Heaven and Earth Designs, um, Josephine Wall. And I, I had really hoped to get the parked threads all completed. I didn't quite get there, but I had my new start waiting for me. So I just decided that it was good enough. I'll finish them next time I get this out. So, but I am happy with how far I got. Let's get these out of the way. Here it is now, compared to last time. So I all I have left is just a few of these, and they are pretty long, um, but I just have a few more random colors right there, and then everything else got stitched in. I um, This is clearly the edge over here, and then this, I believe, is close to the bottom. So that's fine. I'm not 100% positive, but I think that is really close to the bottom. So that's really fun to get that far. And next time I pull this out will be a couple weeks into June for my traditional rotation for um, family stitching because this is for one of my aunts who lo loves irises. And so hopefully I'll get these finished up then and maybe start back up filling in the top from the top down, which is my plan. This is 25 count linen one over one, full crosses. And 
a lot of these colors right in here were completely used up. So I have some zeros in Pattern Keeper of how many stitches are left in that color. So that's always fun. And so I worked on that a few more days. And I wrote down my stitch count every day, which is kind of fun. Um, so on that one, I got a little over 200 every day I worked on it since I talked to you. Um, well, the very first day that I finished Anne and then I worked on Iris just a little bit, that was a little over 100 stitches. But every other day that it was just quick stitch Iris, I did a little over 200 stitches each day. And then the very last day, I got almost 400. So I was determined to get as much done as I possibly could, but I didn't quite have enough time to do all the part threads. So if I had done a little bit more on some of the other days, I probably could have done it, but I was, I don't know if I just wasn't feeling stitching or if I was just busy. I can't remember. Life, whoosh, it's, it's too much. <laughs> anyway, so my, I did have a new start though. The next day was the 21st. So my monogamania was officially done and I started Winged Monarch by Buttons and Beads, which is my first Mill Hill kit. So that was exciting. This is on perforated paper with all the threads. I put my stuff on a card. I didn't get to any beading yet, but I spent two days on this and I'm pretty happy with what I got done. So I just took a regular index card and hole punched it and put the names of the colors and separated them out and lots of pretty colors. So that's fun. And this is how far I got on this for two days. I got two colors completed. I started with this dark orange because it was near the center and got all these little streaks. And then I thought, well, let's just see what this symbol is. It was a bead. See what this symbol is. That was a bead too. That's what it's a symbol. Uh, that's still a bead. <laughs> There's a lot of beads in here. So then I'm like, well, okay, let's just do the black, get a nice outline of the, bur of the butterfly done. Which symbol is black? <laughs> then I went and did the black. So, um, so that turned out really nice. That'll be fun to pull out either for travel stitching or just for prompts. Whenever this is um, white on one side and color on the other side, it looks to me like yellow, but they call it lime. And one of the background colors in the picture is a light green. This, this stitching right here is light green. So I'm curious when that goes in, if it'll look more green or not, because this is the color that is, I guess it sort of matches. Anyways, that's the background color. So that's fun, that's how far I got. And I started this um, along with Christine at Calico Stitching here on Floss Tube and Terry Lee Crafts. She started a smaller Monarch Mill Hill kit and she actually finished it, started and finished it in one day. So go over to her channel and take a look at that. I think she's probably posted her progress by now. Um, I think I saw a video go up recently. So that's fun. So we worked on those Mill Hill butterflies together. <clears throat> and I even put a needle minder on it because I, this is one of the ones I made myself with a button pack from Joann's and E6000 glue. So there we go. That's all of that. So that was fun to get started. And I do have a couple others. I have a snowflake ornament and a like a winter scene, but it's fun to get one of them started. So there's that. And then I went to Princess de Broglie, <clears throat> which I had gone back and forth on about whether or not I should restart it and how I should restart it if I do. So this is this one. It's a golden kite. I bought this. It was my very first golden kite pattern. I bought it a day or two before my birthday, but it was being discontinued on my birthday. So I took that as a sign that I needed to get it because I had been admiring it. I've always loved this painting because of her wonderful blue dress. So I decided to go ahead and buy it because it was on sale and I fell down that rabbit hole of golden kites and eventually heaven and earth designs and you know, the rest is history. But they re-released it um, a few years back and I, when I paid for some Pattern Keeper compatible versions of my older charts, this one came in the new format that they had redone. Not, it was not 
compatible at all with the paper pattern that I had. Um, and I emailed them once about it, but it, they never responded. So I, I was just like, whatever, it's fine. So, um, I was going back and forth. The colors are very similar, but they're not exactly the same and they're not in the same places. Some of the, some of the golden kite patterns that I got were the symbols had just slightly changed. Like the three sisters that I'm going to start today, hopefully start working on, not start. This one is another old one that I have, and some of the symbols are different, but all of the actual colors are the same and in the same location. And that was the same with Knitting Woman too, I think. And so it was a little bit tricky getting it plotted in Pattern Keeper, getting what I had previously stitched put in. Um, but once I got that done, it's just smooth sailing from there on forward. Um, I have not got Three Sisters plotted yet, so I'm probably going to spend most of my stitching time today actually getting that entered into Pattern Keeper, what I've finished so far. And it's so much confetti all over that it might take a little while. So I may not get any stitching done today, but I have two more days after today that hopefully can get it all done today and then start have at least two days of stitching on it. So back to Princess. Um, I was thinking about keeping it the last I told you because I thought I could mesh the patterns together. I, I was looking at it and realized I couldn't. Like, it was just too different. Um, so I decided to restart it, but I will, I did decide to crop it. So I am going to do the background because not having the background, I think, would be awkward edging because I'm going to stitch it in half stitches on a smaller count this time. It won't be 18 count full crosses. It'll be 28 count half stitches because I still need two strands for, for all the blends. But I am going to take out the top row, which it's nice in the new version. The top row is just above her head, so I could just go through Pattern Keeper and block out the whole top row, whereas the original one I have goes a little bit into her head, so I would have had to do it like block by block <laughs> to cut out you know, this much or something. So it, that was really nice on the new version that the page break is in a different spot. <clears throat> and then I'm also going to cut off one row of pages, column of pages, this direction, and cut off some of the dark and some of the chair. But I'm keeping these ribbons so it doesn't doesn't mess up those ribbons at all. It doesn't mess, mess up her, so that's what I'm doing. One row off each the top, one row off the side. And I went ahead and re... Um, restarted on 28 count mushroom even weave by MCG textiles and this is similar to the 28 count light blue that I'm doing my um, the touchdown piece from one son and the dragon ride by Teresa Wensler with my other son that's technically MCG textiles also and this and that light blue was actually even I know there's a lot of their colors um, the white and the antique white are not even. Um, and you have to be careful which type of patterns you use on them, that it doesn't matter if it's a little bit skewed. But this was even, so I'm I'm going to head, went ahead and used it. I like to stitch full coverage, if possible, on non-white fabrics because I'm, I'm assuming there'll be a little bit less show through. Um, if, if any of the fabric does show through, it won't be as stark and glaring, so. Especially since the background on this is really dark, I think that'll be helpful. <clears throat> so I went all all in on this one. I, as I said, I had like 200 stitches roughly each day on quick stitch iris. And granted, those are full stitches. The first day I worked on this, I got 743 half stitches. The next day was 883 half stitches and then the last day wasn't as good yesterday 328 half stitches so that was only like 150 full but see 883 half of that you know 400 and something a lot of these stitches there's a few spaces that are fill in but most of it you still have to count every stitch so it's not an exact half you know half the time so I anyways I was really excited by the start that I got and I would like to show you Here it is. I got the entire width. I think this is like one stitch away from the edge of the piece. So it's the entire width. 
of the design and I got a nice start on her face. So you now get to see crazy woman in her progress until she's all filled in with the confetti and then she looks amazing. And I thought it'd be fun to show you the old one next to it as far as the size goes. So this is my old one on 18 count. And obviously this has the top, all the top that I've cut off that I won't be having here. I'll put those roughly in about the same spot. Well, this is probably down here, but So I guess it's hard to see. Maybe we'll put the faces together. So there's their faces together. You can kind of see that. So I got a nice start. But this one will be a lot smaller and I won't have as much background to do. So I am happy with this. This is this needle minder, I believe, was given to me by Colette, the highway stitcher. If I'm wrong, let me know. But I think that's who I got that from. Um, it's a little scrabble tile with my initial on it. So I'm really, really happy. And I think whenever I pull this out, I'll probably try to be good and do a length of thread in the background before adding in some more on the lady. So that the so that the background will move along. And because of Pattern Keeper, it's really, really easy to make progress on this. So, woohoo. So these are um, half stitches and I have two colors of yellow in her face and, and a brown and two, two colors of, two or three colors of green in her hair already. And one color, main color in the background. And then there's like three colors extra over here where there was a darker streak on the wall of some paneling. So there, that's it. I thought that turned out really good and then maybe I'll, well, I don't know when I'll pull it out again, so I don't need to bother with the side, sideways. And this is ah, crazy, so I'm gonna have to fix that. <laughs> so I've got a lot of extra fabric there that I can use for something else <clears throat> on the bottom. I'll probably just keep what I've stitched as a memory, I guess. I don't really need to frame it or make anything out of it. Um, I'm happy just Moving on, moving on, and I got a wonderful start, so I'm really, I'm happy about that. So here is my three sisters, which I hope to get to today or tomorrow. I will at the very least be entering this into Pattern Keeper. And I showed you what it looked like a little bit ago um, in the paper. So here's this one. This is also on 18 count, Ada. And I have a start on the first girl. This piece reminds me of my sisters and me and my sisters. This one is me, the blonde one, because my hair is lighter when I was younger, but it's, um, I have the lightest hair color and it was really blonde when I was a, a little girl. And then the middle girl has red hair, which my older sister has red hair. And then my younger sister has dark brown hair, which is at the very end. So I thought that was perfect because we are three sisters. And so, like I said, there's a lot of confetti in this. So it'll be, it'll, it'll be a task to get it into Pattern Keeper. Thankfully, since I was doing extreme cross country, there's only a select colors so used in here. So I may pick some colors and like, tr uh, just, you know, swipe through all the colors of particular symbols until I get it all done. Or I may go block by block. I'm not sure which will be easier. So we'll see. This is already filled in and down here. I've got all this filled in, but I, I haven't done anything else as far as updating Pattern Keeper. So that'll be today's task. And then I'll spend a, spend some time working on that the next few days. And both of these worked for Full Coverage Fanatics Around the World Challenge for um, France. And this needle minder was from No Name Needle Minders on Etsy. So I did buy this one. It's a, they're Scrabble tile size also. They're nice and light for in-hand stitching. And then I get to have a new start. So I'm going to be starting my first Joan Elliott on um, Friday because 
I'll do three days on Three Sisters and then three days on Joan Elliott before the end of the year. So this is in the Cross Stitch Gold July 2010 magazine. I did not find this. This is the one I'm doing. I did not find it on Joan Elliott's website. So this may be the only place you can find it. So it's July 2010, Cross Stitch Gold. I was given this again at the Southern California Stitchers Retreat. Somebody was giving away their old magazines that they didn't want anymore. Here's a big picture of the design. <clears throat> and I am taking some liberties with this. So it won't be pure, a pure Joan Elliott with all the shading that is Joan Elliott. Um, I do have Edwardian Lady on order. I, I went ahead and had to place an order for something else and it had come back in stock on 123 Stitch. So I will maybe let myself start that in Joan, in July for Joan Elliott July. Um, but we'll see, because I'm, I'm already thinking of starting all the Brooks Books Advent Animals in July. And there's another one I had written down that might be fun to start in July that we'll see. But anyways, that would be fun to start that one for Joan Elliott July. But then I could have this one going too, and maybe work on both of them again in July. My plan is to completely convert this to fancy floss. And like on their dresses, you can kind of see there's certain drapes. I would probably stitch the fancy floss in along those drapey lines so that it would be um, a similar flow, but different. And then when I was pulling threads, I thought, well, if I'm doing all the dresses in fancy floss, let's do their hair in fancy floss too. So I found some equivalent hair colors, different, a different one for each girl. Then I went ahead and found a color for the grass and then for the pole. And I think these are all repeat colors from the dresses. So um, I may need, I'll double check, but like this one has some yellow in here and it, it may be one of the hair colors, you know, so I could just use that. There may be white, which I would probably just do white. Yeah, because she has some French knot white and she has some white in the flowers. So those I'd probably just use white or maybe find a pretty um, fancy floss white too, just to be a purist. But anyways, so I'm doing color and cotton spring morning this is hand uh, eighth of a yard of jobelin by color and cotton 32 count even weave and it's a little brighter than you're seeing there and then i found a bunch of fancy floss so let's take it out of that bag and so here's all the colors maybe i will share with you what my thoughts were on this because i changed some of the colors a little bit to match the, the fabric because this color in particular was probably going to blend in with my fabric. So I needed to adjust it a little bit. So I have a darker blue, Mystic by Color and Cotton, Sunflower Yellow by Victorian Motto, which is in place of that light blue dress. I have Peony by Color and Cotton, and Fairway by Color and Cotton, which is a darker green. And just dump all this out maybe here we go and special orchid by victorian motto so these are the five dress colors i went ahead and did silver lining for the flagpole and lily pad those are both color and cottons for the grass and this is a lighter um a lighter green than the the one for this this looks too dull in the picture but it's a nice bright green as well um, but it is a darker shade so in the in the places in the grass where it needs like dark um, back stitching I'll use the dress color for that so it'll stand out differently and then these are some of the colors I use for hair, hair. mellow caramel by Victorian motto wheat fields by gentle art and Adobe adventure by Victorian motto quarter horse by color and cotton and Shades of Sable by Victorian Motto. So those are the, come on out. Those are the hair colors that look pretty, pretty accurate there. So they're all a little bit different. Little, some of them more, you know, ready, ready colors and, and super blonde and all of that. So, um, and then I don't think I pulled anything for the skin. <clears throat> I think I'll probably do skin as charted because it's got, dimension and shading in specific locations so 
<clears throat> I may do that as charted. And yeah, I don't think I want to do it one over one. So that's probably the only part that will be as charted is the, the skin. So I think that's going to look really pretty. <clears throat> and I'm going to start that on Friday. And I have a few people that are starting Joan Elliott's or considering starting Joan Elliott's also on Friday. <clears throat> um, Colette, the high-waist stitcher, she was thinking of starting a Joan Elliott on Friday with me and Mary, the disorganized stitcher, and Charlene from Witchy Stitchers, and Christian, Kristen Ann, and Terry Lee Crafts was also considering it. So all of those ladies <clears throat> are going to start some Joan Elliott. I don't know, should I do one over one skin? <laughs> I've always hated the thought, but there's not that much of it. We'll see. It's on 32 count, but it, anyways, neither here nor there. So I'm excited. If you would like to start one on Friday, feel free. Um, I'm going to have a lot of fun playing with these colors and it will be a little bit unorthodox for um, changing a John Elliott like that. But I think with this particular type of pattern, I think it will look really pretty and I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. And then before I probably, probably won't be able to come back and film on Monday again. So I'll probably have to come back on Tuesday. So Monday is the first and I will be going back to my original plans and doing my husband's piece on the first. And this is where this is because I probably won't get to show you a before then. This is on 40 count vertical one over one half stitches. And this is my starting point. And I hope to get a little bit more done on that one. This looks like an ab abrupt uh, stopping point there. So I may try to fill in her arm with yellow. That could be a good thing to do this time around. So it doesn't look so weird. <laughs> so anyways, um, that's my starting point on that. And beyond that, what I'm thinking of doing is um, going back to the Enchanted Stitching Challenges for, for June. So I'll work on the Simpsons piece for my husband and Touchdown for my son and then two more random ones that fit prompts. And hopefully these other family pieces fit prompts as well. And then going forward, that's what I'll do. I'll, I do have two starts that I would like to do in, in June because the first day of summer is in June in the northern hemisphere so i want to start my summer cross kit and summer queen by miravilia so those two will be happening at some point in june i don't know exactly when the cross probably should be on the first day of summer because i wanted to have all of the crosses this year starting on the first day of that season so i'm not sure when summer queen should start if anybody cares to do something like that with me to stitch her with me or to start her with me let me know and i can pick a day um other than that, I think I need to go and help my family with lunch. So that's my plans for this coming week. I hope you enjoy the rest of your May and the beginning of your June. And I will, Lord willing, be back next week. Talk to you later. Happy stitching.